I'm ready for the word. Are you guys? I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet with me as we approach God's word today. I'm going to read a passage of scripture to you from Deuteronomy. I want us to listen very carefully to the word of the Lord. This is Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. We're going to read a good little bit of this because I want us to get the context really good. And there's, uh, there's some stuff on both ends of this and in the middle and all the way through that we want to get. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. It says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Now, just given that right there, I don't know, but I, I believe that should have had the Israelites' attention, don't you? Uh, you know, I'm going to give you these commandments and understand the reason why I'm giving you this because I want you to be able to go in and possess the land that I have promised you through your fathers. And he goes on and says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore, thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates and a land of oil, olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones, whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and are full, and when thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he giveth thee, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do good at the latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Yes. That he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be. If thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall ye perish because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. I want to read 
one of those verses or the second part of verse 3 just one more time. He said that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Not by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Would you bow with me for prayer? Father, we bow before you today recognizing we're on holy ground today. Recognizing that we have read and heard in this gathering your holy word. I pray, Father, you help us all to treat it so today. I pray that you help us to, to receive the word. And we, I pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, Lord, would quicken that word to us. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move in every one of our hearts and lives today and cause us to heed every admonition of this word today, Father, so that you might do for us what you desire to do for us so that we might experience it and give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. We thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. I titled today's message, The Complete User Manual for Life. The complete, think about every one of those words, nothing missing in it, it's complete. I want you to think just for a little bit about what we've read. It was God's word to God's covenant people in the Old Testament. It covered everything they would ever need to know. It dealt with every need they would possibly ever have. It dealt with every concern. It contained all the provision that they would ever need. It contained exceeding great and precious promises to them. It promised supernatural blessing. It promised favor. It promised protection. Who wouldn't be excited about a word like that from the Lord God. We should all be confident in God's care and provision for us as well. So, how many of you know that he does have a covenant like that for us? Just like we just described. That covers everything. He didn't leave anything out. But there's something we have to get that he was, he was really trying to emphasize to the people in this day, and I believe he would emphasize it to us today. We can't miss this part. All of this that God promised his people was available to them, but it came to them on his terms. On his terms. How many of you today like the picture of what God was offering his people? Sounded pretty good, didn't it? How many think if, if that, that a vision of such as that is something you could really get excited about and appreciate for your own life? Well, God later said through the prophet Jeremiah, and he says this to his people. He's saying it to us today. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you a Hope and a future. God has a plan to give you and me a hope and a future. One translation says a desired end. You know, the older I get, the more I think about the end. I want it, I want to end good. I want it to end on a positive note. God said, I've got a plan for you that throughout your life, your, your life is going to be such that I'm going to bring you to a desired end if you'll serve me. Amen. Then later in the New Testament, 
as we read, we find out that Hebrews tells us that you and I live under a better covenant, a better covenant than these guys did that we're talking about. It says it was established upon better promises and it is secured by a better sacrifice. And we sang a lot today about the blood of Jesus. It was the blood of Jesus that secures our future and our covenant. Listen to the good news as we go on in 2 Peter chapter 1. It says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that God didn't leave anything out? But he, he has made available to you and I everything that pertains to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to his glory and virtue. And then he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, he says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen unto the glory of God. That's just another way of saying every promise in the book, the answer to me and you is yes in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah, hallelujah. God has given us exceeding great and precious promises that we can bank on, that we can look forward to, that we can believe him for and experience, and he has secured them for us through his son, Jesus Christ. But get this, just like the original covenant promises of God to the Israelites all of this comes to us on God's terms. It is fully available to me and you. But it's available on God's terms, not ours. So do you think it's, you know, is, is it worth us finding out God's terms? Is it worth us following God's terms? I believe it certainly is. He started out telling his people, he said, now I'm doing all this for you, but, but he said, I want you to learn to keep my commandments so that I can do this for you. And he said, I want you to understand that it's not just by bread alone. It's not just by the natural life that you're going to get there. It's not going to be an automatic that you're going to walk into all of this. But this is going to come as you understand and as you heed every word that comes from the Lord. Every word that comes from the Lord. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm afraid we don't take it quite literal enough. I'm really afraid that we just we 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 have missed some things over the years because we just didn't take that part serious enough. I don't know about you, but when something is not working just exactly right, I'm a kind of a fix-it guy. Most of you have been around me long. You know that. I'm a lot of a do-it-yourselfer, and I'm a lot of, you know, if I don't know how to fix it, well, let's find out how to fix it and go ahead and get it fixed. But if something's not working exactly right for me, I go and dig out the owner's manual. Or nowadays, more often, I'll pull it up online, and sometime if I have to, I'll print it print it out online or I'll do the old YouTube video thing and I'll watch two or three videos about how you fix this how you do this and and um, I, I, I need to know what I need to do to make this thing work that's not working but I'm afraid sometimes we have done God's word that way We've treated it like those owner's manual. You know, it's a natural thing for a man. You buy something, you, you unbox it all, and some assembly are acquired, and, and how you use a thing, it's a natural thing for a man to throw the book down. Yeah. We dump it out of the box. Oh, yeah, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. 
And then when it don't work right, <laughs> after we take it back apart two or three times and put it back together, we get the book out. And we say, now, oh, I see what's wrong now. This, this, well, I don't know how I missed that. We treat God's word that way sometimes. Well, you know, we, we, we run hard till something ain't working. And when it's not working right, then we start saying, well, I better find out. Uh, uh, the answer's supposed to be in the book there. <laughs> I know last week we, we all heard a message. As a matter of fact, pretty clever, by the way, media department, having some technical difficulties right at a certain time. But Sheila and I was in the whole service last week, and uh, except for... There's a part of it we couldn't hear. Um, but uh, I know there was something good going on here. But I started to say, we heard a great message from Pastor Perry last week on the just shall live by faith. Didn't he do a good job with that? He sure did. But he said, we got to live by faith. We got to live that way. I want to remind you that what God said about everything that you and I approach in this life. Everything. After we got saved, you know, he told us to get our mind renewed by the word of God that we might prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. If we aim to do the will of God, our mind's got to be renewed. We can't keep thinking like we used to think. We can't operate like we used to operate. We can't use the same manual that we used before we got another manual our mind has to be renewed and so we've got to understand that God said that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God I don't want to insult your intelligence but I want to drive home this point he said every word every word every word is significant in that book not just the ones we like there's some stuff I really like in there. There's some stuff that challenges me and some stuff that I ain't crazy about, but it's in there and I still got to do it. Not just the ones that cater to our wants and our needs, not just the ones that are convenient, not just the ones that don't require very much from us, but he said we must live by Every word, if we want to walk in the full benefit, if we want to have life like God intended life to be for us, like he longs for it to be, full of joy and full of peace and full of supernatural provision, then we must pay attention to every word of the Lord. Can you say amen? I wonder, have you made it up in your mind today? Have you made it up in your heart today that you're going to live by every word that God has given you revelation on? Amen. Well, I know sometimes we hear the word and we read the word and we get it, but we hold in reserve whether or not that's going to be the way it's going to work in our life or not. Well, now, you know, uh, we sort of think, well, when we get there, we'll, we'll see if we deal with it that way or another way. Anybody identify with what I'm saying? But I think it's important, and I think what God is communicating to me, and I'm, I'm doing my best to communicate it to you today, is there's got to be today. God is calling for me and you today, this day, to make a decision. That we're going to get it made up in our mind and in our heart that by his help and grace, that whatever he gives us revelation on of his divine word and will, we're going to simply say, yes, Lord, that's the way it's going to be in my life. That's so, yes, Lord. Our attitude is going to be, yes, Lord. I hear Perry saying, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord. 
See, the problem is we try to take God's word a lot of times like a bag of trail mix. We want to pick out all them M&Ms. Leave the rest of it for somebody else. That's where we get in trouble. That's where we get in trouble, folks. That's where America today, that's where our great country is in trouble today. That's where the church is in trouble today. Let me bring it on down a little closer. You see, we think, oh, well, this is going on and that's going on around us. It just doesn't seem to line up with the book, but, you know, it, it, it really doesn't seem all that bad. But I know it don't line up with the book, but it just really doesn't seem all that bad. Well, I know God's word speaks definitely about that, but I'm just not sure I would take it. I, I don't, I'm not sure I would go quite that far. I can read what God said about it right there. It is plain. It's in black and white. I can, and my daddy used to say, it's just as plain as ABCs. I can see what God said about it. But this is a different day when that was, I mean, that was a different culture. That was in a different land, different situations. Uh, you know, I'm just not sure we can apply that. Can I tell you what God says in Proverbs? He says, there is a way that seemeth right unto man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. He told us what he told us in the word because he wants to bring us into the place that he's provided for us. And he said, you know, there's some things that might seem like Maybe this don't apply, but you take my word for it, it applies. And if you'll, take, if you'll take my word serious, if you'll keep my commandments, if you'll follow what I'm telling you, I'm going to show you later. I'm going to take you in to that good place that I'm provided for you. And I'm going to keep you from some things that you would have to go through that you can avoid if you'll just listen to my word. Every word. Somebody said, well, pastor, uh, yeah, I know what it says, but I, I just got to tell you, I just don't feel that strongly about it. Darling, can I tell you something? It does not matter how you feel about it. If you don't get past how you feel about it, you're never going to do the will of God. I'll tell you that right now. You've got to get past what you feel about it. What God said is what matters. And he said every word is what we have to live by. So just how do you feel about the word of God anyway? Do you, do you embrace the word of God as the complete user manual on life? I got to tell us, we got to hear something here today, folks. We can do it his way or ours. But let me ask you, how's that been working out for us? I wish America today could understand we can go the way we trying to go or we can go back and go God's way. Folks, I'm going to tell you, if you, I hope you can tell, I really have a burden about this. The message that God has given his people. 
I'm talking about the complete message, not the watered down message, not the politically correct version, but the pure, unadulterated word of God. It must be heralded. It's got to be proclaimed. And you and I have got to not only embrace it ourselves, but we've got to get some backbone about us in this day. We've got, to, we've got to find some of that Acts version of holy boldness that came when people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When they spake boldly the Word of God, and it didn't matter if they got hauled up for it. It didn't matter if they got stripes for it. It didn't matter if they went to jail for it. But they said, we will obey God rather than man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you and I must, we must get this, such a conviction about this that we're not just Sunday morning people about this. But wherever we are, we take a stand for what God said. We say what God said. In season and out of season, when it's convenient, when it's liked or disliked, and can I prepare you for something? There's going to be some folks that ain't going to like it. You, I, I don't want anybody, now I know we see a lot of this on Facebook. It's like sometimes you, you see people look like they're just trying to provoke a negative reaction. We should never do that. Never, ever. We're not saying anything just to pick a conflict. But when the issue is already up, even if we know it might not be popular, God's got a voice present. And by the, the, the grace and the power and the humility of the Holy Spirit, you and I must speak the truth. We must speak the truth because the souls of millions of people hang in the balance. And here's what God said. He said, my people are being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. They don't know my word. They don't know my will. They don't know what I want to do for them. They don't know my power. They don't know about the, uh, the efficiency of the blood of Jesus that we sung about. They're being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And let me prepare you for something else. Sometimes, too, when people rise up and get angry and they want to fight you because of where you stand, it's because they're so far out of the will of God. It's been that way ever since Bible days. It's been that way ever since Jesus' day. I mean, I, I just need to remind you there was... A lot of things happened in there because somebody just, just stood for what was right. And the reason for that is disobedience and rebellion will harden, it'll harden hearts. Disobedience and rebellion hardens hearts. And it makes people react. It makes people oppose even the truth. They know the truth. They're out of line with the truth, and when you speak the truth, it confirms what they already know, but it also sparks further resistance. Well, they're fighting. A lot of them, a lot of them are fighting. Uh, you know, they're fighting against uh, their conviction in any way, and, and you speak the truth. But we've got to speak. We've got to speak what God says at all times. I, I got a picture illustration. I'm going to have the media team put up for just a minute. I want to show you where a lot of Christians stand on their convictions. There's a lot of people in the church today in that very position. They're trying to be on both sides of the fence. They... <laughs> How many of you know that's kind of a that's kind of a tough position to be in because there ain't nobody on either side that can help you much.
We've got to have some... We, what does God's Word say? That's where we have to stand. Let me give you a few examples. I could say today, I don't think I'll get any argument in here about it, but some places I would. There's only one God. There's only one true and living God. One true and living God. God, He is the creator of all things. There is only one way to heaven. One way to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ there is only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. But how many of you know today in our land, you could, you could make that statement in a lot of places. You can take that stand publicly. And you'll be met with many people that will want to rise up and say, I don't agree with that. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Jesus is, uh, you know, he's a good teacher. He was a good prophet and he had a lot of good teachings. But, well, so did you know, Buddha and Muhammad and there's, there's many ways. There's a lot of good ways. You can't really emphatically, dogmatic, dogmatically say there's only one way to heaven. There's a lot of ways to heaven. You could be met with that today without any doubt whatsoever. But let me ask you something. Where are you going to stand? Oh, I, I, I know in our country today, I mean, we, we want to honor every religion except Christianity. We want to promote. We want to, you know, everybody wants to protect all of them except our faith. We want to call any book holy except this one. We won't let people take oath of office on something other than this these days. But you promote this right here. Where, where, are you, where are you going to stand? Do you really believe that this is the Holy Bible? It is the complete Word of God that has been given by holy inspiration through men of old. And God has watched over it and he has protected it down through the years. There's no other book that's had more effort to be totally destroyed and eradicated than this. But God has preserved it and he's seen that we have it today so that we can have everything that pertains unto life and godliness. Where are you going to stand on the things of the Bible? You better get that, you better make it up in your mind today that, that you're going to live by every word of the Lord. We're talking about what's going on. We, we're dealing with stuff in the church today. Let me, let, me, let me touch on another one. In the church today, I can stand here and make the statement, adultery is a sin. Fornication is a sin that God condemns. Not everybody in the church thinks we ought to go that far. Oh, they, I mean, a lot of them, a lot of people that really need to hear that don't even squirm when you say it anymore. They're so comfortable with those things. They begin to justify, well, you know, it's really, it's really not that bad, Pastor. I mean, now it used to be back in Bible days, but this is in this day for, for people to live together, not married, and for people to go on and have sex, you know, as long as they're loyal and true to each other. And, and uh, you know, it's really not, what did God say about it? There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is the way of death. By the way, God's Word does say that sex is blessed and it's undefiled in the setting of a marriage union between one man and one woman. In other words, God created it and he made it holy within the bounds of his Word. But the Bible calls sex outside of marriage 
fornication or adultery, and both of those is a sin. You better, you better treat it as a sin, folks, if you want the blessing of God. If you want God to be able to do everything in your life that he has already said, that he, he's already promised that he wants to do, then you better understand that this is something that's pretty big to God. I mean, he took the time to spell it out pretty plain. I'm not making y'all uncomfortable, am I? Y'all got so quiet. I'm just saying what God said. I must say what God said. If I don't say what God said, I got no business behind this desk. He said you're going to live by, you need to live by every word. Let me go on. This this past week has evidently been LGBTQ Pride Week. Uh, I'm not even sure I'll put them letters in the right order. <laughs> but I was, watching, I was watching a news program in the hotel one morning after that procedure I told you about. And I was watching the news on a, one of the national networks. And they were interviewing people of that lifestyle... I mean, obviously, you know, this is one of the things that the media gives a lot of attention and they're glorifying to everybody that will listen to it. But they were, these guys were on there giving testimonials about their beliefs on the subject. And as you watch them interviewing people that were gay, Lesbian, transgender, whatever, all those terms. It was very obvious that they were very affirmed in their feelings about it or in their hardened convictions. They were very uh, confident in that. One, one person even said they believed that homosexuality was a gift from God. They were totally uninhibited. They were totally proud of themselves and the life they were in. There was something that stood out to me in all the individuals was that there was a, obvious a very defiant attitude in them. I mean, it was, it was cocky, proud, in-your-face type thing. One guy said... I'm a gay Christian, and people just need to get used to the idea because we are here to stay. You're a Christian. What do you say about it? Well, the Bible says that nature itself will teach us a few things. It teaches us about things like that. The scripture calls homosexuality an abomination. It says when a man does not like to think on God, he will turn them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are unseemly. You can read all about that in Romans, the first chapter, about the end of the chapter. But having said everything that I have said right here, I want you to, if you, if, if you wasn't halfway listening, listen to what I'm going to say right now. I love gay people. If you quote me on anything, don't quote me on Facebook, if you don't mind. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to pick a fight. But if you're going to say, Pastor said this in church, you make sure you get this part in. I love gay people because God loves gay people and Jesus died for gay people so that they could be saved and delivered. I love them. Maybe God needs to do in all of us 
what I think he's done in me on that subject. I, when I'm around people that are obviously of that persuasion, I have empathy for them because I realize they, they've, they're deceived. That there's, there's, uh, there's, there's a, a, a spirit working in them that they need deliverance. And unless somebody can show them the love of Jesus, Unless somebody can be Jesus in that situation, they won't experience deliverance. But you got to know what, you can't vacillate on this, folks, if you're a Christian. The Bible says that homosexuality is a sin, it says it's a perversion, and it says that it will not be allowed in heaven. Now, I wouldn't tell anybody that and make it sound like, well, I'm glad you can't go. That's the way we come across sometimes. We've got to be careful in any of this stuff. When, you know, when you're going to stand on what God said and when, when you're going to speak the truth to people about where they're at, you have to convey it in such a way that, hey, man, I know you feel that way and I, I know... This is what you're about, but do you understand what God said about Can I show you what God said about that? Can I show you why it's important that you hear the truth about where you are? That heart has got to be communicated. Let me ask you this. Are you going to live by every word? That God said? Or are you just going to live by some of it? Is the conviction that drives you about every topic, is it anchored in God's word or is it just part of that? Let me ask you about another one. Here's one. What about Abortion. Everybody's talking about abortion these days. Where are you going to stand on that issue? Hey, by the way, I ain't mad at nobody here. I ain't trying to hurt anybody's feelings or offend anybody. But I am trying to speak the truth to you so that by the help of the Holy Spirit, you are challenged to deal with the, the, the issue as to whether or not you are anchored on the Word or whether you're out here in some place that's not going to be where God wants you to be, where His blessing can follow you. Where are you going to stand on the issue of abortion? Are you going to side with man's hard-hearted wisdom? Are you going to stand on what God's word said? Let me ask you this. Will you be one that will defend the innocent? Can you think of any creature in the world that would be any more innocent and pure than a little infant baby? Who will come to their defense? I want to simply tell you what the word of the Lord says. It's a big enough issue that God made this one of the Ten Commandments. He said, thou shall not kill. Pretty plain, isn't it? Listen to what Proverbs 6 says. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Now listen to what they are. Some of them are going to surprise you. A proud look. Huh, I don't need God.
A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. As you can see, there's a, several things there. If we had the time, we could talk about that we better take serious look at what God says about it. Obviously, we can't address many of the issues this morning where compromise is found in the church today because of time. But we've, what I have done is I've touched on some of the hot button issues where Christians tend to be swayed or double minded. But the question is is God's word going to settle it for you? Is his word going to be enough? Are you going to second guess what he said about it? Are you going to stand and defend what he said about it? What, about, what are you going to say about Christians and alcohol? What are you going to say about Christians and recreational drugs? What are you going to say about Christians and strife? What are you going to say about Christians and gluttony? Whatever the subject we could mention here, we've got to decide today that we're going to live by God's word. God's word. Not what we think, not what we feel, not what is popular, not what is universally accepted. What God who knows best and has nothing but good for us has put in his word, what he has said, that is going to settle it for us. God meant what he said when he said it. And he's never changed it. If you and I want the full blessing of God, and I believe we do. If we don't, we're just playing church. But if we want the fullness of his promised provision, we must repent of desiring his blessing on our terms instead of seeking his. God, I want I, to have your blessing. I won't demand it on my terms, but instead, when I hear you have a blessing for me, I will begin to seek your terms so that you can do in my life what you want. So we must decide today, church, it's not going to be some of it, but it's going to be every word. Every word. Every word. Life is tough. Nobody ever said it's going to be easy. Life is complex. There's somebody that makes sure that our life has challenges. But thanks be to God, you and I have the complete and unabridged user's manual that is complete with illustrations. It's the Word of God. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet with me now. And... To close this, I'm going to read one verse of Scripture to you that I believe. I believe everybody here today has heard God's Word. I think you've heard God's heart. 
I thank you that the Holy, Holy Spirit, I believe, has witnessed here. So right now is decision time for all of us. Right now. When God speaks to you and you know he speaks to you, you can't afford to say, well, I'll think about it. Let me mull that over a little bit. Let me talk to two or three other people and see what they think. When you know God has spoken right into your heart, He brings you to a point where He is looking. He is looking at your heart for what a response would be. Right now, it is important that you and I Tell him what our response is going to be from this day forward to every word of the Lord. Listen to this. It says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the God of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I believe that God is looking at us today and I believe he's brought us to this place today and faced with this decision. What are you going to do from this day on? You're going to follow something else? Or are you going to serve the Lord God with all of your heart? As for me and my house, if you will join me today in proclaiming to God, you're a good God. And as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If you'll join me in that today, I want you to come and let's, let's fill this altar area up. We hope this message has been a blessing to you today. When you are in our area, please consider joining us in person off exit 98 at One Harvest Place across from Walmart in Dublin.